Hey, I'm Sam Hahn, and you're listening to The Weldon Green Podcast, a show about performance and esports. Weldon Green is the performance coach and sports psychology trainer for esports athletes focused on helping them optimize their game, learn faster, stop tilting, and get in the zone. We're starting off the show with the Ask Weldon segment, where we take questions and answers from the Ask Weldon YouTube show, revolving around a specific topic. And that topic is... Let's go! Let's go! Let me hear it! Motivation. Motivation is something that everyone struggles with. When we feel motivated, we feel like we can overcome anything. Then, just a few days, hours, or even minutes pass, and we feel like we've hit rock bottom. We either can drag ourselves through the muddy waters to continue our journey, or we just lay down in that puddle, sad, distraught, and unmotivated. In games, it's easy. We just play, have fun, laugh, smile, and win, right? (laughs) No. Unless I'm playing Dora the Explorer Goes to Canada, or some game with infinite lives, sunshine and rainbows, and where everyone wins, that's not my reality. Is it yours? So what is it that keeps us down? What is it that gets us back up? Where can we find motivation? Well, let's start this episode answering the question, how do we find motivation? You don't find motivation. Motivation is something that is an emotion. So just like you don't find anger, you don't find sadness, you don't find happiness, it's an emotion. You can you can try to engineer the environment and your mindset to end up with an emotion, but an emotion is like, neurochemical response to your environment so uh, or your thoughts yeah, that's part of your environment motivation I would like you to think of motivation as something that happens to you basic idea is there are two kinds of motivation there's a the kind of motivation that isn't here that you feel that you're familiar with that is like ooh, I really want to do this thing and nothing will keep you from it okay and then there's the other kind of motivation which is described by society society sees you doing your homework they say he's a motivated guy doesn't really matter what you feel like inside let's say that you're like I hate this essay and like your teacher looks at you and doing the essay and says you're a motivated guy let's say you're sitting there I love this essay inside you're feeling that your teacher looks at you and says you're a motivated guy let's say that you are playing a video game you're playing a video game League of Legends you're like I hate this game I hate playing this and your teacher looks at you doing that and says wow you're a lazy guy you're playing a video game okay Let's say that you are playing League of Legends and you're super motivated. You're like, I'm going to get this guy. I'm so motivated. I want to get better. You're improving every day. You're Bjergsen level conditioning training every single hour all the time. And you're analyzing your game and incredibly pulling apart VODs and whatever. Anyway, you're super motivated. Teacher looks at what you're doing and says, wow, he's really lazy. He's playing a video game. Okay, so there's motivation as what motivation is. A psychological construct here in your brain actually neurochemical, so it's more biological, psychobiological. And then there is motivation as in what society defines as motivation. Okay? So I think that you're asking, how do I find my motivation? How do I find my energy to keep studying for more than an hour? Because you cannot just go find that chemically induced high that is called motivation. It's not possible. It happens to you. Okay, so if we can't find motivation, what do we do? There are other things that guide actions besides how you feel in a given moment. And those are values ways that you want to be in the future. So what you do is you look at your homework and you tie it to something that you want. Connect it to something in the future that you desire, that is the way that you want to be. Or you look at yourself and you say, I am the kind of person who what? What kind of person are you? What do you value about people that you respect? What do you value about how people see you? What do you value about yourself? You connect it to these values and these desires. And you wire that up. Okay, You connect them. And you cinch it up and you tie it and you make it really strong, okay? Now, your actions, the thing that you're doing right now is connected directly to something that you strongly desire or directly to something that you value about yourself. And then you force yourself to do it in order to achieve those objectives, in order to appear in that way or to be the person that you so wish to be in the world. And that is values-based living, okay? Acting according to your values instead of according to your emotions. So you don't want to find your motivation. You want to find your values. Partially, that's why I'm making this video right now, because it's late at night. 
I was watching a YouTube video and I was thinking, oh, I was working all day and watching kids all day and do I really want to make a video? And then I was like, yes, I want to be the kind of person who tells themselves they're going to make a video every day and then makes a video every day for their fans answering six questions late at night when they're tired because that's the kind of person I want to be. That's the kind of person I want to see myself as. And that's a value-driven behavior because my emotions were telling me to turn on Flash, get a bowl of cereal, and then go to bed after that. But here I am not watching Flash. And here I am, half a season behind The Walking Dead. Walden, I feel your pain. But anyways, what are your values? What do you want to be? What do you want to do? Those are all questions that some of us haven't really asked ourselves when it comes to playing video games. Is winning or getting better important to you? Is winning this game or you having a good performance more important to you? When you let your motivations become tied to your emotions rather than your values, you end up on a roller coaster ride. And it's a scary one because you find yourself falling off of it every now and then. For example, when you realize that you value having fun when playing with your friends instead of winning, you can stop tilting so hard when bad things happen. Instead, you can start to laugh at the dumb mistakes you and your friends are making and start focusing on enjoying the time you get to spend with them. Or maybe you really want to hit gold this season, but your buddy that you queue up with is hurting that climb. One thing that you might need to decide is to stop playing ranked with that buddy because it's hurting your ability to climb and causing unneeded stress and resentment towards your friend. And that's never good. Now let's talk about another common issue amongst gamers, their longevity for certain games. What happens if you find yourself losing interest in a game? I think there's two aspects to it. One is if you have that desire to play the game, like somewhere in, like it's kindled, then your motivation is naturally going to go up and down Okay, on top of that. So you're, think of your, your desire or your drive as a separate thing, as like a little fire kindled inside of you. And then think of your motivation as an emotion. Some days you wake up very motivated. Sometimes you wake up very unmotivated. Okay. So it's like going up and down. So you can, you can work on your motivation by, you know, taking time away, relaxing, by finding something that you enjoy doing, by playing with friends, by increasing the social aspect of it. There's all sorts of things you can do to like manipulate your emotions. Uh, you can do mini games. Like when I got bored of the game once, I just was like, all right, I'm going to play nothing but Quinn. I'm just going to become a Quinn main. Um, and another time I was like, all right, just Talon. Like, I'm just going to play Talon and troll. Like I would basically rush level six and then I would just like kill the AD carry for the rest of the game. I would just like get um, like boots of mobility and I would just kill the AD carry the whole rest of the game and do nothing else. And I actually won a lot of games like that, um, like an insane amount, because uh, apparently tilting somebody is like the best method to win League of Legends. But like, yeah, find, find mini games, ways to enjoy the game. I get pleasure out of other people's unpleasure. So like making him cry was like good for my soul. Um, I'm kind of a mean person in games, I guess. That's why World of Warcraft is such a good game for me because, like, you just basically, uh, just basically like, sit around and collect your own items. It doesn't really impact other people all that much. Um, but yes, I was in Stranglethorn Vale, killing level forties. I'm sorry. So, besides these external actions, is there anything internal that is involved in our drive? Then you have that that inner fire, right? The desire, the drive, okay? That is something that only you can install. So nothing you can do or try to do can manipulate that. Like you either have that drive, that like desire and the reason for doing something, or you don't. But there's something we can do about that, right? And for that, you just, you kind of need to find your reason or your why. You need to, you need to look inside and see, am I driven to do this thing? So I am driven to play computer games. Like I haven't played in like maybe eight months. And last night I played League of Legends for the first time in eight months. And uh, I was like, oh yeah, I remember why I love this life and this game so much. And um, so I think that, that like that, that inner drive is something that you, you just have to decide, like, do you have it or not? And if you don't, just move on as quickly as possible. Maybe it'll come back later. Who knows? But don't sit around and try to be motivated about something you cannot accomplish. Like my job as an English teacher, I sat around in that job, like by basically two years too long. Like my drive for that had gone away 
and I tried to motivate myself to do it and just ended in frustration and, and um, pain and annoyance. So like I just, the sooner I kick it to the curb, the better. And uh, I say that about everything. Like why do something if you're not driven for it? Like find something that actually motivates you and then worry about your motivation. If you're trying to motivate yourself on top of nothing. You have no fire underneath. You're just in for a lot of, uh, a lot of heartache. We've already talked about finding your values to help your motivation or drive. The big thing here is if you're trying to find a way to continue playing a specific game, you need to find that inner fire or drive for that game. And Walden makes a really good point here. If you don't have that drive anymore, why continue trying? If you don't have that drive, you're in a serious uphill battle. Think about a time where you're forced to do something you really didn't care about. Maybe that was a summer job, that 500 page reading assignment you learned nothing from, or even the part of the game that took way too much time to grind through and you just ended up quitting. Maybe that job was so painful you didn't want to save up for that PS4 anymore. Maybe you don't care about getting that A in your literature class. Maybe that game wasn't really good anyways. All right, let's talk about another scenario. You've listened to the last four episodes of the Weldon Green podcast, good job, and you're totally reshaping your approach to this game. But then you run into those games where their bot lane gets first blood and a double kill, your top laner has a wrong mastery, and your jungler just died to his own red buff. The match looks hopeless, and you just want to surrender. If we're quick to give up on games, how do we improve our drive to play as hard as we can until the very end? So you have to wire up your drive to something else. Essentially what you're saying is, I am driven to uh, enjoy winning games and having fun in a relaxed way. So you do not want to try hard and you do not want to lose games and, and have fun at that or enjoy it. Like you don't want to, you don't want to take joy in losing games. So you might not have yourself wired up for enjoying losing games and that's totally fine. You don't, you don't have to, but if you want to improve your drive, then there's a couple things that you, you can do. One of them is you can create mini games. And that's something we've already talked about. What about a second step? Is start measuring yourself other than wins. So a lot of the frustration that comes with drive is that you essentially have one metric of measurement, which is, did you win the game or did you lose the game? And that isn't always the best way to measure growth. So it's better to say like, this is the thing I want to get better at and then go watch the replay and then make an assumption or not an assumption, but make an evaluation. Did I get better at it or not? And then see that growth. And then you take joy in whatever game you have winning or losing. Okay. So step one is creating mini games. Step two, wire up your drive with metrics other than losing. That requires measurement and reflection. This is probably something that would be done through VODs. It's something we talked about in a previous episode, but as a quick reminder, why should we be looking at our VODs again? Because you can't get a lot of stats out of the game right now. You can't really um, like look at the post-game analysis and say, how many times did I you know, correctly group with my team? It doesn't come out. You have to look at the VOD and say, okay, I was working on you know, grouping. Uh, did I do it at the right time? Let's see. I shouldn't have grouped here because they were still split fishing. I didn't see them in the fog of war, so that was wrong. Oh, this is the perfect time to group. Look, they were about to try, but we got there first, so my instinct was right. And you can evaluate your decision making and say, it looks like I'm getting better at roaming, or it looks like I'm getting better at grouping at the right time, or it looks like I'm getting better at pushing the wave to just the right amount and then running away like a chicken because I know that they're coming to, to join the lane and, and catch the wave and kill me or something like that. So we're working hard to keep improving and reaching our goal. What happens when it takes a bit longer than a few attempts? You know, something like trying to get into the LCS or expanding your champion pool. Long journeys get tiring. How do we keep going without those instant results? I was talking about this with somebody, this guy is an artist designer. And, um, you know, he's, he's really driven, but the sales aren't there. And he's always producing a lot of stuff. And you have to do a lot of business stuff before you ever ramp up a business. So you... It's like tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of work. You got to be driven, but you get zero feedback for like years. Like what I did, I started writing mind games in 2012 for basically two and a half years. I did tons and tons and tons and tons of work with zero results. Okay. So, um, how do you find that drive? I think like hate and, and 
anger and fear are big motivators. Like that has a lot to do with it. You got to find super strong emotional motivators. And that's one of the reasons that these are hard to find in like the developed world and that you see people super motivated in, in other countries where their lives are on the line. Um, it's just the way that it works. Like when your life is on the line, you're more motivated to get that drive. So for you, I would tap into very, very base emotions. Like you have to think like strongly about what you want and you have to fight to make it important in your mind. And once the thing that you value about yourself and about your future is crystal clear, then you can pour and pour more intensity into it. Got it. So find that emotion. But what about intensity? If you don't have that intensity, it's hard to keep up the drive. So if you're a pretty laid back, not intense person, then either it has to be under the surface or you have to like find a way to take something in your life and turn it into intensity. So what's your motivator? Is it fear? Fear that you're worse than your friends? Is it anger? Are you just upset if you're stagnant in your play? For me, my strong motivator would be satisfaction. I love the feeling and achieving a goal that I've sweat and stressed over. It stirs up a lot of pride and joy. Now, I'm on my climb to plat, and I'm currently spamming a mumu in the jungle. I'm not getting the satisfaction in making fancy plays, outplaying the enemy team, nor am I putting up the highest kills in a game. To be honest, it's kind of boring and I'm not getting the instant gratification on making an amazing Lee Sin insect play. But when I'm queued up for my sixth game of a five game winning streak only playing a mumu, I remember that satisfactory feeling I got last season when I hit plat. That is my end goal, not the instant gratification of being the star of the game. That is what keeps me from playing my god awful Lee Sin. Plus, I'm freaking winning. I love winning, so that helps with the satisfaction. All right, so we figured out how to deal with our motivational issues. Let's say we want to help our buddies with their motivational issues, or maybe you're a coach. You've heard the phrase, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? How do you encourage people into a positive mindset? Or if they don't want to do it, how do you approach that? The way that I do it is I deconstruct people. Uh, find out what they value, find out what they want, find out what makes them tick. And you can do this to yourself too. It's called self-awareness, self-reflection. You do it through reflection. Uh, If it's not what you're coaching, if the thing that makes them tick or makes them excited or that they actually value in life is not what you are teaching them, then you aren't going to be able to get them to drink the water, even if you lead them to it. Um, Especially if it's something that's hard. Like if it's like, you know, tolerate your teammate and uh, that's something that's difficult because they hate their teammate. And if somebody's like, well, I want to win this tournament no matter what is the most important thing in the world to me, then they'll tolerate their teammate, like whatever, whatever they have to do to win, they'll do it. But if they're like, I don't really care about winning this tournament as much as I care about, you know, my, my face or my reputation or being annoyed by this person, then it's really hard to get them to tolerate their teammate. So you have to make it easier if this is the case Or you can just tell them that, sorry, they don't really care about this enough to actually change their behavior. Makes sense. Goals need to be aligned with each other. And hopefully that drive is strong enough to overcome the differences that are present. Then there's the other case where they use something where they say they do, and then they can't seem to get around the behavior to to doing it. And this is called avoidance. And you have to build up a person's poise to get around this avoidance issue. Essentially, it's called experiential avoidance. People avoid experiences that they dislike. And a poise is the ability to do something, endure an experience you don't like because you want the outcome that comes with that, because you value the outcome rather. So even if they don't feel like it, they, they'll do it. So you can start with really small tasks. When I coach teams and athletes, I start with really small things. And every week we have something that we're pushing against, something that we're straining against, something that we're kind of like overcoming. And you build up that resilience. It's a resilience skill. And that is how you train a horse to drink water. So unfortunately, as a coach or an outside party, there's only so much you can do to guide them to motivation and help them build their poise. But first, you need to teach your friends something they value. If they want to get better at a champion, instead of letting them spam three games of graves, lose them all, and then quit playing graves because they're super unmotivated, try sending them a good guide on graves. Maybe show them a VOD of a graves player. The second thing Weldon mentions is about avoidance. Your friend says 
they want to learn graves, but they're avoiding the work to do so. Well, call them out on it, carefully of course. And if they're willing to change their ways, help them build their poise. And we start with small steps. Between games, show them what a graves combo looks like and then have them try it in sandbox mode. Then show them a decent 5 minute video guide on graves jungle. Then as they're getting better and better, maybe you show them an in-depth commentary on someone playing graves jungle. And then last. Maybe you need to give them some more information on jungling better, because their jungling needs work too, not just their graves play. And like Weldon said, this can totally be done on yourself. Motivation It's something we all desire, but can be hard to hold on to because it's an emotion. An emotion can come and go with varying strengths and because of various stimuli. That means some days will be hard, while others much easier. But there are ways to help ground our motivation, like evaluating our goals, becoming headstrong towards our values, and increasing our poise. It's not easy, just like all the other topics we talk about aren't easy. Remember, it takes time, and you're in it for the long haul. I want to finish this segment by sharing one of the most motivational lyrics I've ever heard. It goes like this. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you. Mm. Strong words about motivation. This segment is The Walden Journey, the part of the show where Walden talks about whatever experiences and thoughts he wants to talk about. This episode, Walden talks about his journey as an assistant coach of G2 during week 6 and 7 of the EU LCS Spring Split 2017. But before we go into that, I want to talk about Walden's MAC program. Motivation is a long journey that requires a lot of self-reflection and internal realignment. Things like being values-driven and building poise are covered in the MAC program. This online mindfulness acceptance commitment program was made to help you gain mental resilience, improve your focus and performance, and become a mindful warrior. Try it out using the link mindgames.gg slash MAC. And because you're listening to the podcast, use the code PODCAST to get $5 off during checkout. The link is in the episode description. Now for the Walden Journey. So we came back from from IEM and I think everybody was feeling a bit burned out because the way that I handled it was I had to go back to Finland and, and square stuff away with my family and and hang with my kids for a little bit and work on some of the projects that I'd put off. And so I felt, I guess I didn't realize it, but I felt pretty disconnected from the team that week. I didn't really check in with them. I didn't have any one-on-ones. We didn't have any workshops. And... It got to be, you know, game day and I, I turned on and they were playing Vitality and it went pretty well. Just kind of trundled along till we stopped them. And that was, that was that week in a nutshell for me. But when I got back to Berlin the next week, I learned that behind the scenes things weren't exactly going as planned. So I got back to Berlin in week seven of the EU LCS and we were to place Blyce on the... Uh, on the weekend. What I found out when I got there was that people were pretty burned out from the IEM experience. So if you can imagine it this way, we start off the season and everybody shows up early and we train really hard. And then we we have five intensive weeks and everybody's kind of like, we're going through training cycles, right? And everybody's kind of preparing for vacation and they're, and they're ready for a break to kind of like lay off the, the gas a little bit. And then all of a sudden, one day before we're all about to check out mentally and emotionally and physically, IEM comes up. And so everybody is really excited, right? And and logically, they know that it's super important. So everybody puts the pedal to the metal and and goes full steam. And then we come back and have one day off and immediately start training again for the next week. So our break was, was nullified. And it's pretty hard to recover in the middle of a season. It takes, it takes far longer, right? Because you can't just stop training. You have to dial back training. So then you have inefficient training for a couple of days, and then that affects future training, and then people are burned out from that. So 
basically the entire two weeks uh, was uh, trying to trying to kind of connect with people and and figure out how we could pull out of the training slump that we were in. And this is this is one of the reasons that in a previous teams that I'd worked with, I used sleep trackers. So for those of you who aren't aware, you can track burnout physically. You can see burnout happen in the body with a, with a number of different metrics. One metric alone is not enough to help identify burnout, but usually people use a constellation of metrics. So for example, elevated heart rate, depressed immune system, increased uh, breathing rate, you know, resting breathing rate throughout the night, things like uh, delayed onset muscle soreness combined with uh, headaches and thirst when waking up, things like that. So a lot of like physical symptoms. But one of the kind of best early warning signs is sleep, sleep quality. And so it's pretty easy to see in a sleep tracker when, when an athlete's getting burned out, right? Because there's usually no other thing that's disrupting their sleep when maybe stress, but stress is kind of related to burnout as well. But we don't have sleep trackers here at G2. And so it was pretty hard to diagnose exactly how bad people had it because, you know, as always with with athletes, they can complain about things that, that they don't really care about or they can not complain about things that are really, really impactful to their performance. You know, some... Some athletes are super stoic about something that they should be talking about for sure. And then a lot of times athletes will whine about stuff that's not really important. So without, you know, hard data, it's hard to kind of separate the noise from the signal. But eventually, I think I was able to figure out who was actually burned out and who wasn't and why. And then all of a sudden, it was the end of the week and I was leaving Berlin. The Weldon Green Podcast is produced by Sam Hahn, mixed by Sam Turnberg, and content provided by Weldon Green. Remember that this podcast needs your support. Share this episode with a friend that would benefit from the topics we cover. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform because you wouldn't want to miss any future episodes. And if you want to contact us, you can find us on Twitter, YouTube, and other social media platforms. Those links are in the episode description. And don't forget to check out the online Mac program at mindgames.gg slash MAC with the code podcast for $5 off at checkout. The music you hear is from Paul Door, and the other music you've heard is from Ramsey's Beat. You can find all the music you've heard on this or any previous episodes on our SoundCloud playlist, Walden Selects. Again, I'm Sam Hahn, and thanks for listening to the Walden Green Podcast.